Now we've looked at AI for various different uses when it comes to web design. One of the areas we haven't covered is how we can use it to get logo ideas. And then how we can take those logo ideas when we find something we like, convert it to a vector image, and then edit it to take it to exactly where we want it to be. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you today. So first of all, we're going to be using Midjourney as our AI tool, but you could easily use Firefly, you could use Dali, you could use any of those kinds of tools. So the first thing we're going to need to do is start coming up with an idea and a prompt. So for this, we're going to use a fictitious coffee shop logo. So we're going to start off with Imagine, as we always need to do when we're using this. Now we can go ahead and put our prompt in. Now we're going to keep this really simple. I want a circular logo. I want a coffee bean as the kind of focal point of it. I want it to be a vector style artwork, even though it's going to be a sort of bitmap image, a PNG. And we want it simple, minimalist, and so on. So these are just the terms that I'm going to use for working with this particular prompt. Once we hit return, that's now going to go ahead and start to generate what it feels is a good starting point. So these are the initial results we're getting back. And as you can see, well, they're not exactly what I was asking for. So there needs to be a little bit of refinement when it comes to the prompt that we're using. So let's go ahead and tweak that. Now, as always, there's a couple of ways we could do this. We could go ahead and use the variation options that we have here for any of these images that we may like as a starting point or we can go ahead and remix it, or we can start with a brand new prompt. If you use any of these variation options, say for example, we like the fourth one as a starting point or the third one, we can click, that will open the remix prompt up and now we can fine tune and refine exactly what we have inside this prompt. So we could say we want to add some things like Art Deco in there because I quite like that style when it comes to logos. And you can remove anything you don't think is relevant. And then you can hit Submit. And what that will do is that will take that starting point and adjust it based upon what you've inserted in here. However, like I say, you may want to start completely from scratch to get a totally new starting point of four images. Let's try the Remix prompt, see what it comes back with, and then we'll try a different prompt. And as you can see, it's now given us four variations of that starting point, none of which I actually like that much, but it shows you how this would work. Alternatively, we can come back in, do another Imagine prompt, drop in some different options this time, and let that go ahead and come up with some different variations. And with our newly revised prompt, you can see this is what it spits out. Now, this is closer to a logo that you would traditionally type C, whereas the other one's more sort of an icon. And this is okay, but it's not really where I want to go. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to try some other prompts, I'm going to tweak things and refine things, and we'll come back with what I've picked out of the refined versions. So these are the logos that I've kind of come up with. And I quite like the look of the fourth one. So I've already gone ahead and upscaled that. So you've now got a higher quality version of this. Open this up in a new browser window so you get the full version. And you can see this is kind of like nice looking logo. Now there's a couple of things we need to be aware of before we move this over to vectorize it. First of all, we can ignore the text. We're gonna strip that out and put our own text in with whatever we want. But you'll also notice in some instances, you may get uh, sort of gradients being used as part of the design. When it comes to vectorizing these, the vectorizing process doesn't necessarily create good gradients. So you are going to do some kind of refinement on that. So bear that in mind. If you want nice gradients, you may have to do some remedial work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to download this, save this to my desktop, and then we're going to upload it to the website that's going to turn this into a vector piece of art. Now, if you're an Illustrator user, you could easily use the inbuilt trace feature inside there, but I don't use the Adobe suite of products. I'm an Affinity Designer user, so I need a kind of third-party tool. Best thing is, this is totally free. We're going to go over to vectorizer.ai, link in the description for this. And all we need to do is drag and drop the PNG file that contains our logo. And that's going to go through now the three different steps to convert this into a vector-based version away from the PNG that we've just uploaded. Now, if we take a look at the end result, there are obviously a few issues we need to deal with, but most of these are really simple. So we've got a good starting point. So what we need to do now is go ahead and download this. And we now have an SVG version of that logo. Let's go ahead, open that up now in Affinity Designer. And there's our logo. If you take a look on the right-hand side where we've got our layers, you can see there's all the layers for our vector version of our logo. So we're already most of the way there. Now all we need to do is go ahead and refine this. So we can do things like remove the background. We don't want those kinds of things. We can just get rid of all these gradient kind of bits and pieces going on. We can select the text and get rid of that. We can do the same with the text underneath. You can see we've got 
In this example, we've kind of got this really poor looking gradient. So what we can do is we can simply go ahead and select all those pieces that make that up. And then you can combine those into the main area just by simply merging those together. And you can see that now picks up the color. We've missed one bit out, but that's not a problem. We can select that, select everything and merge those again. So you can easily come in and refine exactly how this all looks. If you want to get rid of any of these little sort of stray dots and things that you might not want in the design, you can remove them. And then when you're ready to drop in some text, you can simply go ahead and drop in your logo. So we can just say whatever we kind of want to put in there, we'll space that up and set the size that we want. And then you can change to, to whatever font you want. So for example, let's do the ever faithful pop-ins for this. Select it, change our typography. And we can change to whatever we want. So we might want this to be extra bold to look extra terrible. But you kind of get the idea where I'm coming from with this. We very, very quickly used AI to come up with some starting point ideas. We've then used a free tool called Vectorizer AI to convert it from its PNG format into a vector based version, and then load that into a tool like Affinity Designer to be able to customize, update this and do exactly what you want with it to get a fully workable end result in a vector format that can be scaled to any size you want. Great starting point, even if you just want to use this for some ideas, and then you can combine this to create your own kind of mood boards using something like Freeform as part of the Apple ecosystem. As you can see, I've got some mockups, I've got some different logo ideas, I've got some sort of web design ideas, pretty much all using AI. And this is a really good starting point that you can use either for your own inspiration, or you can put together into a presentation for a client just to kind of show them what you're working with, what ideas you've got to gauge and get feedback from them. But hopefully this has opened your eyes to how easy it is to actually take your ideas inside AI tools and then actually realize them in a fully editable vector format. As always, all the links to everything I've covered are in the description below, and I would love to get your feedback on this. Let Drop a couple of comments in the comment section. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.